Alright, so it's a nice night and I don't really have anything to do tonight. So I'm going to knock out another video. Figure might as well. Um, today's video is on Porcelio Scaber. Um, a staple in the isopod hobby and the bioactive hobby. Um, this video is going to be kind of like a two-part thing. Uh, most of it's going to be about the care of Porcelio Scaber. But the other is going to be... Um, basically my thoughts on Porcelio Scaber as, um, as far as it goes towards, uh, using it in bioactive setups. So, um, this is their enclosure. Um, it's another tall shoe box from the container store. A couple inches of substrate, kind of tapers off down towards the end. It's mostly kept a little bit moist, but not like soaking wet. And there is a dry corner, um, where they can hang out. Lots of, uh, oak leaves, um, oak wood, bark, um, some nice rotting stuff in there, eggshells, cuddle bone, you know, the works. Um, so I'll pause real quick so I can, uh, show you them. So here we are. Um, by the way, this is the, uh, koi variety of Porcelio Scaber, Porcelio Scaber koi. Um, there's a bunch of different, um, morphs or color varieties of Scaber. Um, there's white ones, there's, uh orange they also call them giant orange sometimes um, there's calicos uh, there's the orange koi there's dalmatian dairy cow orange dalmatian um, just a whole bunch of different kinds uh, um, but yeah a bunch of different colors very interesting um, isopod they've been around for so long that we've isolated a bunch of different colors for them let me get my macro lens might as well get my macro lens out Maybe get it out in a second, um, but I'm going to show you kind of where the bulk of them are in here. Let's see, I think a lot of them are under here. Yeah, some under here. Um, I really like the koi morph. This is the only morph of Skaber I have. I only have kois. Um, I figured if I was going to get Skabers, I would get the one that I like best, and that one is the koi morph. Um, for me, at least, you know, everybody has their uh, their preferences. I like koi because it has a lot of variations. It's got orange, black white, you know, all the works. But, uh, yeah. So, um, care for Scaber is very similar to the care for, um, many different isopod species. Um, there's really nothing too much special about them. They're one of the most common isopod species you can keep. Um, I think maybe the only other one that is quite as prolific, um, in the isopod hobby is, um, maybe Lavis. Um, then of course maculatum and the dwarf species because people like them as cleaners um, but um, the only main difference um, you can keep them very similar to Lavis um, the only main difference I would see f have um, making a distinction for with these is their protein intake these guys love protein um, they need a constant supply of it um, I like to use fish flakes Hold on, there's a plane coming. I'm gonna pause that way you don't have to. Planes passed. Um, I like to use these fish flakes, the little cichlid pellets. There's a ton of them in here. They can each have their own little pellet and walk off with it. It's really funny to watch them walk off with it. Uh, when you look at for fish food, you want to make sure that first ingredient is fish, and it's mostly really high in protein, at least 30% protein, because that's the whole point of feeding them. Um, if you want to feed wheat, you'd feed wheat. So we don't want a ton of wheat in here mostly protein um, let's take a look see if I can't find I'll attach the macro lens right now it's a nice uh, darker one along with a lighter one they're kind of similar to calicos the koi's main difference being that they have orange whereas the calicos I don't think normally have orange on them there's a couple hanging out in a crevice oh my god another plane god Okay, plane's mostly gone. So here's a kind of up close look at them and all their different color variations. Let's see if I can find. Uh, there's a nice one in there. Yeah, I really like these. Um, main reason I got the koi variety is because um, I really like koi fish, but I don't have the space for koi fish. So uh, these are a nice little alternative. Um, so now that I've kind of shown you these and how to take care of them, 
Um, I'll get to kind of a little cautionary warning with these guys. Um, a lot of people try to sell you these as uh, a bioactive cleanup crew. Um, definitely do your research and make sure that what you're feeding or you're using these for to clean up after them is big enough because Skaber are extremely protein aggressive and I have my own stories and other hobbyists have corroborated my stories of these guys um, basically acting like little piranha when not given enough protein and eating um, animals um, mostly smaller geckos and frogs and invertebrates when they don't have enough protein another plant okay another plane gone so um, basically what I'm getting at here is to be careful with what you put these guys in with because I have known people that spent a lot of their hard-earned money on a fancy gecko like one of the new Caledonian geckos um, bought it had it well established and super healthy and then suddenly one day found it um, skeletized just completely gone um, and it was perfectly healthy the day before and they just lost their you know four or five hundred dollar plus investment like Chihuahuas and uh, the giant gecko the the Lichianus also Cresties and gargoyles um, not to mention your expensive frogs um, just eaten alive well maybe not alive but you know you get the point um, I've even done tests where I've taken um, pre-killed, or not pre-killed, maybe like slightly damaged roaches um, or other small um, frozen thawed feeders and just dropped them in there and they watch them and they, or I watch them devour them like piranha. Another plane, God, it's like all the planes got to land right now. Anyways, so yeah, you get the point. Skaber, definitely uh, be cautious of what you use them for cleanup crews for. Um, I think for your larger reptiles, like if you have a monitor or like um, a big rat snake or something like that, you're fine. You shouldn't have to worry about anything. But like a little baby corn snake or small amphibians and s small micro geckos or new Caledonian, the softer geckos, um, definitely reconsider. I would uh, opt more towards using dwarf species or even um, Porcellionides pruinosis, they're my favorite cleanup crew isopod. You can check them out in another video I did. Um, apparently people feel the need to race their cars and stuff while I'm doing my videos. Um, so anyways, check that video out if you want to look for a decent cleanup crew isopod. Um, and yeah, um, this was Skaber Care. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, feel free to listen in the comments if you want another you know, isopod care video or care video on another invertebrate. Um, or if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So yeah, have a good night, guys.